English is sorry. Arthur Summer. I am still the king. I think. I have been ruler of this house for as long as I can remember. I didn't inherit my kingdom. Mr. and Mrs. Smith and their daughter, Emma, brought me here to rule as a puppy. I have done as well as I could. I have barked at the main carrier. I have kept the ridiculous squirrels from the yard. I have taken the smith for their walks. I have played with them so they get their exercise. I have made sure that no scraps of food remain on the floors. My subjects have treated me royally in return. They feed me on a schedule. They give me treats when I insist on having them. They brush my royal coat to its full beauty. I sleep when and where I choose. True. There is a noisy bird that talks all day and the silly hamster that runs all night. Don't be fault, though. They are also my subjects. One good wolf quiets them right down. Now everything has changed. I can no longer relax in the sunshine. I cannot even take a decent rest now. My humans are not my faithful servants anymore. They even turn their backs on me at times. I cannot believe this has happened. I did not see it coming. I was not prepared. It began on a June morning. The humans having done their duty in preparing my food. Got into the large rolling thing. I watched them getting it. And then I settled down for a nice nap. They did not go anywhere, though. They came back right away, carrying some misshapen scruff of a thing. Poor little kitty, Emma said. It must have been so frightened when it was trapped up inside the car's motor. It's a good thing we heard it before I started the car, said father. Let me see if I can clean the poor thing up, said mother. She's so sweet. I was curious, of course, so I tried to sniff at the thing. But they blocked me from it. No, Arthur, said Emma. Get back, boy. I could hardly believe what happened next. Father put me on the back porch. Nothing could have prepared me for it. At first, I thought... He was taking me out to play fetch, which he loves. As soon as I went through the door, though he closed it behind me, I had been barred from the kitchen, which is the center of my kingdom. 
My emotion was simple shock at first. I did not panic though. I realized that the thing was a young cat. I knew about cats. I had no fondness for them. But they were not a problem. No cat dared to invade my yard. As I thought about it, I rather um, admired my people. They had saved the cat and were caring for it. It seemed a nice bit of kindness before they sent it on its way. The cat did not go on its way the next day, though. Nor did it leave the next day or the next. In the meantime, I rolled only the porch. On the fourth day, I came back to my kitchen. Here, Arthur, Emma said. Miss Summer, isn't that a pretty name for a cat? I came closer and the disgraceful thing scratched my tender nose. Yeah, I barked. Wow, Father said, grabbing my collar. I guess you're not ready yet. When it became clear that the cat would stay, I gently explained to her who was in charge. Harumph, Summer said as she walked along the counter shop. Then she left the room. A long struggle began. She went where she pleased. She went in things, on things, and over things. I could not control her. She warmed the human's laps at night. They petted her while watching the lab picture box. As the cat grew, she became bolder. Sometimes she teased me. She was quick, and I could not catch her. She would run under something and meow loudly. Then someone would come and put me on the porch. At first, Hamster thought my troubles were funny. Hey, King Arthur, he said. Who's the boss now? When Hamster awoke one evening to find Summer on top of his cage staring down at him, he didn't think it was so funny anymore. Bird was always on my side. Travel, travel. She squirked whenever she saw Summer. The cat just looked at her with a smile. That cat was not stupid. When the family went out, she disappeared. I never knew where she went. I just do whatever I please, she told me one day. If you don't bother me, I won't bother you. I said, bother you? She said, I hardly think about you at all. The cat and I have reached an, an uneasy truce. She's part of the family now, but I don't know why. She doesn't take the smith for walks. She doesn't care about the noisy maid carrier. She sleeps and furniture. Neither hamster nor bird trusts her. But the humans like her a lot. She pretends to like them too, rubbing their ankles and making strange noises from her throat. I sleep lately because 
I feel it was my duty to keep an eye on her. I am still the key, I think. Thanks for watching this video till the end.